Hi, this is Brad Linder, and I'm here again with the Nortec Gecko EduBook, uh, which is an 8.9 inch laptop with a modular design, which means that you can sort of sl pop out the uh, front slot here and reach the actual CPU and the um, uh, just pop it out and replace it. It also has AA batteries, rechargeable AA batteries that it runs on. So it's a pretty innovative design uh, overall. It gets quite warm on the bottom, I have to say. It's uh, been running for most of the day and it's uh, quite warm. The reason it's been running for most of the day is because I went and installed Windows XP on it. And we're going to go ahead and boot that now so I can show you uh, how that operating system runs. It came with uh, Watt OS, which is a lightweight Linux distribution that was preloaded by the people at Nortec, and that's sort of what they're shipping it with now, but they also have Windows XP drivers available, and uh, there's also a version of Puppy Linux that's optimized for it. Uh, it can also run Ubuntu 9.04. So it can run a lot of different operating systems, but as I'm about to show you, it doesn't necessarily run them very well. Um, one of the things that I think that made netbooks very special over the last two years or so was the fact that yeah, they, were, they weren't the most powerful machines, but they were very portable, and they could essentially do a lot of what you could do with a five-year-old computer. So they could run older applications just fine, and some newer applications without too much problem, um, even though they have relatively slow processors. This has an x86 compatible processor, which means that it can run Windows XP, but it's very sluggish, and I find that uh, doing simple things like installing applications is a very slow process. Uh, it doesn't take that long to get to a, a full Windows desktop here. You can see it's been just a little over a minute, and we've got the desktop. But not all of the icons have loaded yet. Uh, my wireless hasn't kicked in yet. And in fact, the Realtek wireless adapter hasn't even loaded yet. So I'm going to go ahead and try to launch a program or two just to show you how responsive it is. But um, some of those programs might not load yet. and it's just not responding at this point. Um, I have been able to load Google Chrome uh, uh, web browser, which I think is a little bit lighter weight in a lot of ways than Internet Explorer. Okay, here we go. Oh, and I see the Wi-Fi is starting to load up here. So now again, it's been over two minutes since I hit the power button, and the computer is now just sort of becoming responsive. Um, wireless still isn't kicked in yet, so let's uh, just go ahead and click something besides the web browser for now. or just let it sit for a moment so that it can think. Um, so, you know, while I have to give the Nortec uh, Gecko Edgy book sort of uh, high marks when it comes to thinking outside the box, being creative, and keeping the price low, this this unit actually sells for $199, and if you order in bulk, and I mean real bulk, like 10,000 units, brings the price down to 145 uh, You can customize it in a, in a variety of different ways, and, you know, the fact that it does run AA batteries means that it's going to be much easier to uh, get replacement parts if something goes wrong. You don't necessarily need to order direct from Nortec. It also, instead of a hard drive, the operating system is running off of an SSD, or not even an SSD, just a regular SD card. Um, there is space in there if you wanted to use um, something a little bit larger like an SSD. Here we go. So now about two and a half minutes after we hit the power button, I'm at the point where it's responsive enough that I can launch a little application like uh, the calendar. Looks like we got an error message here. See, so, yeah, I mean, normally when you tap, it should make the start menu go away. Let's just go ahead and open Notepad. So, as I was saying, I, I give them high marks for thinking outside of the box. Unfortunately, this X-Core 86 processor and the fact that it's running from an SD card slot, um, they're just not very fast. Once you do get some of these applications up and running, they can be fairly responsive. 
And while there's kind of a lot of flex in the keyboard and it's sort of a cheap and small keyboard, it's really designed to uh, you know get a computer into the hands of people who might not have had a lot of experience with computers, say children in developing nations. And you know, at, at that point, it might not matter that much if it takes three or four minutes to load a usable desktop. Uh, the point really is to give people an opportunity to do things that they might not otherwise be able to do. So, okay, we've got the Google Chrome, Chrome web browser up and running here. So we've got Google Chrome up here, and it loads uh, the Google website fairly quickly, but let's check out some other web pages. So the New York Times website, which is normally fairly fast loading, and I have a fairly fast internet connection here, taking a little while to think, and that's probably the computer and not the internet connection here. But when it does pop up, it pops up and you get graphics and everything. Computer's still not being very responsive, though. I try to scroll down and it doesn't really go anywhere. And now Chrome is temporarily frozen, uh, and it's pointing out that I don't have the Flash plugin. Let's open a new browser window, see how well that works. And open a little putting. And with um, a 512 megabytes of RAM and a, a 1 gigahertz relatively slow processor, I wouldn't really expect this computer to be much good for things like multitasking, but, you know, you can do some light web browsing on it. You can run the calculator, notepad, some, uh, you know, other software. I'm sure you could probably get some lightweight Office software running on here. You can probably get, you know, Microsoft Office running on it if you really wanted to. I just wouldn't expect it to be very responsive or very fast. And most importantly, I wouldn't expect to do things that you might do with another netbook, like run music in the background while you're editing a document and chatting with friends using three different applications. I think this, uh, this computer's technically capable of doing some of those things, but it's really much uh, more of a one, one task at a time kind of computer. And so, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this as a primary computer for somebody in the developed world, but as a means of getting a low-cost, uh, easy-to-fix, easy-to-maintain computer into the hands of people in the developing world, um, it's an interesting idea. It's, um, and because it can run a variety of different operating systems, it might be a little bit more versatile than something like, say, the uh, OLPC XO laptop, which, uh, you know, they're trying to shoehorn Windows onto it, but really it's, it's meant to run Linux, and um, some people might have a problem with that, while others, of course, have problems with it running Windows. So, you know, here we are with the Nortec Gecko EduBook running Windows XP. This is Brad Linder for Lilliputing. Uh, make sure to check out my other videos where I take a look at uh, the same netbook running Watt OS and looking at the hardware of, of the Gecko EduBook. Uh, again, very interesting hardware, not the fastest, but uh, uh, sort of thinking outside the box in terms of modular customizing, uh, customizability and, um, and most importantly, easy to upgrade and, and keeping the price low. Uh, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.